Okay. So, in the answer session, um, 22nd. And uh, it begins with a question on what is wisdom? Uh, please tell me in details. Is it also called clear comprehension? Probably helpful to, uh, I mean, the, the uh, uh, in, I think it was in the first talk I gave, I, I, I alluded to um, clear comprehension being equated with wisdom, and that's in the Visuddhi Magga. Um, uh, and it's just as a, uh, say, an illustration of, uh, say, application of wisdom, maybe. But wisdom from the uh, um, the word for wisdom in Pali is Panya, and uh, the uh, uh, to uh, the well. Um, comes from the verb pachanati, which is to to know, to understand, uh, so that to you know, to understand something, to know it clearly, um, is uh, uh, is what the Buddha is pointing to in wisdom, and wisdom in general is. Um, is used to um, to point to a certain element, not just understanding or knowing uh, the nature of our experience, the nature of the world, uh, and to not be um, intent in it or not to be uh, creating suffering out of it. Uh, so there is a, uh, a sense of that wisdom is a, um, say in, 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 in English, of course, wisdom is a noun. And then it becomes, and when it is a noun, it is an object or it is a thing that you're trying to, you know, get, maybe you're trying to get some wisdom. Uh, which of course is I mean, it's not a bad thing, um, but uh, when it's uh, when it is a thing, then sometimes one misses the the uh, the say the reality that it's something that you have to engage in. Anya is a is a gerund, um, so that it's a it is a form but, but it's derived from a, from a verb and so it doesn't lose the um, so the active connotation of of the verb so that's why I say Ajahn Jeff uh, translates Banya uh, rather than wisdom he translates it as discern which I thought was a really uh, skillful uh, translation because it's taking the, that verb to discern and then discernment is making it into a, into a noun. So it, it, it's a, uh, uh, so I think that the, the sense of um, discerning, understanding, knowing clearly that is your, um, that's your operative basis for approaching wisdom in a Buddhist sense, say, as opposed to it being some bit of knowledge that if only somebody tell me, or if only I got it, then I would have wisdom. Uh, that's, that's no, you're learning how to rely on this clear knowing, discerning, uh, and using um, the, the, the active process of engaging with clear seeing. Uh, that is much more what wisdom is from a, from a Buddhist perspective. So that's a perspective on, on, uh, on wisdom. Here 
Rajan, in yesterday's Q&A, you mentioned that eight precept lay people were living at the monastery. Would this possibility, possibility be available for women? If so, how would one begin this process? Thank you. Thank you for hosting this Thanksgiving retreat. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's uh, say, at a bike area in most monasteries, there, there are um, women who are, who are uh, men and women who are living in the monastery for shorter or longer periods of time. Uh, and, uh, and of course, that, that uh, uh, keeping the, taking the eight precepts as the, uh, as a basis for, for, uh, for life in the monastery. It's that commitment to, uh, a, uh, um, uh, strength of, of the, of the precepts, um, living a celibate life. Uh, not eating in the uh, after from from noon till dawn, um, being um, yeah, not having access to um, various forms of entertainment, music, uh, television, whatnot. Uh, I mean, Abayagiri is uh, one of the things that's really great at Abayagiri. There's there's very very patchy cell service, uh, so you can hardly get a you can hardly get a phone signal, and for the most part you can. So uh, uh, there's a few places in the monastery you can walk to, and up the hill that you might be able to get. So just not having not having that distraction of uh, phone and 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 then yeah access to the internet. Uh, yeah, keeps things very simple, and the uh, um, the accommodations uh, are, are 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 simple, so that uh, um, with the uh, um, say staying at uh, and different monasteries will have different um, uh, standards procedures for. Uh, for people staying, but I, but I, uh, for a Baigiri, uh, then if one wants to come and stay at the monastery, um, then uh, just going onto the website, contacting the uh, the guest monk, and uh, good to take a look at the, um, uh, say the um, uh, standards of 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 conduct that are expected. Uh, the routine, uh, uh, it's all laid out in the, uh, uh, the section on, on for, for guests in, in the, on the website. And, uh, but then contacting the, um, the guest monk and then, um, because we have uh, a limited amount of accommodation, I think in, in general, there's probably about six to 10 lay men, lay women living at the monastery, staying at the monastery at any given time. And uh, some are there for a shorter periods, some are for longer. Usually the first uh, visit would say up to a week and then, uh, and then uh, people can say be, Come back again in the future. Uh, of course, it also uh, uh, depends on on. Uh, um, so there is an effort that's needed to uh, all the guests part to fit into the into the community, fit into the the uh, the, the the standards of practice, and 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 help out. Um, so sometimes people think that uh, all that monks do and uh, in the monastery or people living in the monastery, all they, do, they just sit meditation, just float around in sort of clouds of bliss all the time. Don't have to uh, do anything. Um, I remember Chen Cha uh, saying he had somebody come and or, uh, ordain. They take they ordain from. Somewhere, somewhere else, and and uh, 
uh, and they hadn't ordained for very long. They came to the monastery and they, they, they left pretty quickly. They're complaining because they had to, they had to work. They had to carry water. They had to go on alms on. I had to chant. They had to, they had to do I, I didn't come to the monastery to do all that. I came to the monastery to have a rest. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, that's not how it works. So that, that, uh, you know, one has to be uh, ready to, to you know, live harmoniously with um, a, a disparate group of people uh, who are uh, varying personalities, varying temperaments, and you have to learn how to live together. So that, but that being said, um, the uh, contacting and and sometimes we you, you know there is we've got uh, more people applying to come to stay to the monastery than we can uh, reasonably accommodate, and we want to uh, make people's experience um, beneficial so that uh, um, you. I don't just pack the monastery with with uh, uh, people. You want know, to just have a have a nice uh, a balance of the number of, of people uh, there. And uh, so anyway, there's certainly guests uh, are 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 available. Uh, uh, that opportunity is available for, for people, whether the men or women. Okay, dear venerables, your teachings have provided me with grounding and inspiration for my practice. Thank you. My question is an attempt to dispel my doubt. I have trouble taking refuge in the Buddha in the here and now, as it is an abstract concept for me. To explain the line in Hanu, the Buddha, say, Buddha Bhagawa, translated as he is a wolf of and holy. Um, tonight's plan verse on respect for the Dhamma also refers to this concept. All Buddhas of the past, all the Buddhas yet to come, the Buddha of this current age. Uh, uh, well, I, mean, I think one of the things is, is this, you know, just, uh, there's many aspects considering uh, when we think of refuge. Probably the first thing to, to recognize is that our takes refuge in things all the time. Um, like um, seeing a grudge. <laughs> you, can, you can take refuge in, 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 in that nursing a grudge, the aversion, ill will, uh, anger that one is nursing. Uh, and holding on to, and that becomes a refuge because you keep, you build up a position of me and up here, a, a person out there who is the object of my aversion. And one takes refuge in that, in that, in, in, in that sense. One is, what, what one takes refuge in, one is relying on. Or one takes refuge in distraction fantasy um, and we, we do that all the time we're constantly doing it so what the mind is looks for things to rely on to depend on to take a refuge in because it's not content with itself it's not particularly happy or or uh, or, or secure in itself so it looks for something outside uh, and the the, the uh, uh, the, the refuge that we tend to take and, you know, really doesn't make us very happy or peaceful. So that the refuge of Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha are, I mean, there's a whole various ways of doing it. But I think one of the things to, to, to consider is how to, rather than it being an abstract concept, uh, what does it, what does one, what, what's worthy of taking refuge in, uh, say, here and now? Uh, 
and say the word Buddha, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's primary other than referring to the, say, the historical Buddha, um, but its primary meaning is uh, awake, one who is awakened. So uh, one who is no longer asleep and distracted in samsara, one who's freed their heart from, from samsara. And that, that's actually, uh, there's a beautiful um, sutta where a uh, uh, Brahman uh, sees the footprints of the Buddha and he's versed in the marks of a great being and there's somebody with some with these kind of footprints this kind these kind of characteristics there's somebody who is special and they go and they, they see the, the the Buddha sitting under a tree and he and he looks uh, inspiring and, and kind of radiant, uh, has this presence about him. And the Brahman asks him, what is he? Right? And is he some celestial being? And the Buddha says, no. Uh, you know, some kind of um, power being, a yucca. Right? No, no, is uh, is he a ghost? No. Is he a human being? No. Uh, even human being, he says no. Um, he goes through all the, the whole sorts of various sort of possibilities. Of, <laughs> and the, the person is sort of frustrated by the Buddha's string of uh, negations to his questions. And, and they say, well, what are you? And and, and the Buddha says, know me as one who is awake. Uh, one who is uh, the sense of Buddha and one who is awake. Um, so that's a, a, a root quality. Um, in the Thai language, when uh, the word uh, is, uh, uh, is translated, like in the, in the translated chanting, um, and it's divided into three particular qualities. Uh, one who knows, so the sense of knowing, one who is grounded in knowing clearly, so that uh, one who knows, one who is you know, grounded in this quality of knowing clearly, uh, one who is awake, um, and then one who is um, birth by, uh, which is uh, happy, uh, happy, radiant, bright. Um, uh, so those are qualities of the, of the Buddha. Uh, so that is uh, uh, you know, like a tangible uh, quality. So we, uh, and also from, from the perspective of taking refuge, uh, one isn't taking refuge in something out there. The nature of the Buddha's teachings like in one in in the chant when we uh, the regular chants on a daily basis, uh, the, one of the qualities of the Dhamma, say the teachings of the Buddha, is that it is openaiko. It's leading inwards, words because we are especially with refuge. We are we need to be drawing this refuge into our own hearts, so that we are creating a quality uh, of relying on our own inner knowing, our own inner possibility, uh, capacity for a way, our own capacity for brightness and, 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 and happiness. Um, so that, that uh, and that, that is a worthy refuge um, as opposed to all the say, the distracted things that we tend to take refuge in. Uh, they say that, that, that Buddha Bhagavad uh, that we chant uh, is awake and holy. Holy, I don't know. I, I don't 
I don't, I don't particularly like that word myself either. Um, but it, uh, but Bagawa uh, is a uh, a Bagawa uh, say in India. That's used I- I even in in uh, the, the say modern vernacular, modern Indian language. A Bagawa is a, is a holy person. Is a a uh, um, say like a, maybe a spiritual leader who is a a revered or a holy being with some kind of special qualities. Bhagawa from, the, say, the Pali is usually um, referring to uh, the, uh, the quality of compassion, the, the sense of the, say, of the Buddha uh, being one who works for the benefit of other living beings uh, out of compassion, uh, teaching and living a, an example of um, a, a, a liberation. So that, that, uh, that is the, uh, uh, that sense of, of, of Bhagawa. Um, yeah, we have all sorts of, um, I think, especially in the English language uh, from a Western culture, uh, all sorts of Judeo-Christian kind of uh, uh, connotations to it that, that, that might not be so accessible for some people. But uh, you know, you have to find something, and then uh, and you're 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 it's just um, uh, that's where it's helpful to have a a sense. Of some of the key words in 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 the in Pali are, 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 are actually really important to try to get a feel for what they're, they're pointing to. Uh, the, uh, uh, all the Buddhas of the past, all the Buddhas yet to come, the Buddha of this current age. Um, the, uh, in, in the ancient Indian um, the world of <laughs> the time of the Buddha, the, the sense of uh, you're looking at time in a very different way. The, one of the things that the Buddha talks about in terms of time is the, uh, uh, the ex- like expansion and contraction of world systems. He's I mean, just looking at, at aeons. Uh, of universes coming into being, uh, or say like uh, this particular current universe uh, is undergoing uh, a period of expansion. Uh, let's say the, from the Big Bang, uh, it is expanding, and at some point it will contract uh, and lapse on itself. Uh, but then that'll be the, um, that in itself is the, the cause and condition for a future <laughs> expansion, coming into being expanded. So time is, 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 is pretty um, uh, fast from that, that conception. And... Um, one of the things is that fully awakened beings who have led to teaching and making truth accessible, I mean, this, that is what a Buddha is. And so that there have been Buddhas in the past, there will be Buddhas in the future, um, and, the, and of course the Buddha of this current age. Uh, so that, that uh, and and one of the things that because uh, uh, what Buddhas do is know that everything is uh, uh, that is of a compounded nature is impermanent, um, and 
And that's that's one in there's a there is a discourse. I don't know if it's in our chanting or not. Uh, say so whether whether a Buddha arises in the world or doesn't arise in the world. This is uh, the the nature of all compound, compounded things. They are impermanent. Uh, whether a Buddha appears in the world doesn't appear in the world. This is the nature of all compounded things. They are unsatisfactory. Whether a Buddha appears in the world or doesn't appear in the world. Um, all things are not self. So that, but what Buddhas awaken to that truth of the impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, non-self nature of these things. And that is the, you know, on a certain level, it's, it seems really ordinary and mundane, but it's because we don't see that, that, we keep volunteering for more suffering in the world. Uh, And uh, this is a volunteer program. (laughs) And uh, you're, uh, 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 it's so that uh, you realize, oh, there's there's a way out. So that uh, uh, this is what Buddhists uh, uh, can do. Okay, next question, Venerable Sirs. Thank you for your efforts on this retreat. First couple of days have been easy, but today many issues have arisen. Uh, I hope this isn't inappropriate to ask. A couple of months ago, I ended gender transition to learn, accept, and love myself as I am. Who am I? What? What am, are? What am I? Are questions I struggle with. Uh, also, I was badly abused as a child by a parent. I resemble that person. When I see myself in the mirror or on camera, it's as well. In terms of Dhamma, what are some things I can practice that could uh, help me make peace with this? I think one is is uh, this yeah this is suffering, um, and the and that isn't sort of this is suffering so I am destined to suffer all the time, but sort of. Yeah, this is this is suffering, and the the uh, and our identification with me, say the I am uh, program, is inevitably fought with 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 suffering, and of course it gets uh, even more complicated with say with say with gender. Identity and sometimes there's you know there's there's whole ranges and spectrums um, and, and you know, it's a really difficult things to negotiate um, and and then with um, the struggles that come from uh, say abuse uh, these are things that are deeply rooted in our in our hearts and you know I think one of the uh, qualities that one uh, again this is where the refuge of Buddha Dhamma and Sangha are are really important to see that the yeah, there is a possibility of freedom from suffering and having a refuge that we do make into something or try to make into something tangible. Uh, and then paying attention to our, our actions in the sense that whatever our perception of our, ourself uh, as a being, uh, with whatever history, um, generosity is always a, a good thing. And to recognize, I can be generous, I can share, I can give, and I can, uh, and whatever we do bears fruit. And so it's so like in one of the, <clears throat> like one of the chants that the Buddha as do at least every day, uh, if not 
more frequent than that, 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 that five subjects for frequent recollection. Uh, and the, uh, I'm of the nature to age, I've not gone beyond aging, I'm of the nature to sicken, I've not gone beyond sickness, I'm of the nature to die, not gone beyond dying. Uh, all that is mine, beloved and pleasing, will become otherwise, will become separated from me, and that gives an impermanence. And then, whatever, whatever I should do, uh, the, the, I'm the owner of my come, uh, I'm the owner of my actions, heir to my actions, born of my actions, abide supported by my actions. Whatever actions I should do, whatever kamma I shall do, uh, for good or for ill, of that I will be the heir. So that we receive the fruits of our actions and, and we can make choices in those actions. So that um, to be generous, to share, to give. Uh, it creates a human connection with others on a, on a very straightforward basis. General, just kindness. Uh, yes, we have, may have been, had some difficulty and experienced a lack of kindness by others, but we have the opportunity to make a choice and to support that choice over and over again to build that habit of kindness uh, and we reap the fruits of that that starts to become our part of our character our our being um, the aspects of sila of virtue of integrity are when we abide by the precepts we are, are living in a way that that um, is is harmless. It is and one of the things that the Buddha that, that, that it, it it gives the gift of of compassion and safety and fearlessness to others and of course to oneself, uh, so that one lives in a, in a sense with safety and trust uh, with others. Because oftentimes, um, say, these difficulties in self-perception and uh, his the history uh, of, of our, say, our family history, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of, it, it challenges uh, our ability to, to trust. Uh, and, and to live without fear and suspicion of others. But, but it's through our actions that we can build a momentum and to actually make it conscious. Um, this is something that, that uh, I know, I know Bhante Gunaratana uh, oftentimes advises people on... Uh, retreats and, and in his teachings to, to keep a journal of, uh, on, you know, on, on a daily basis, and, uh, keeping a journal of all the, the good things one has done, all the kind things one has, all the generous things, all the choices that one has done that has, has have been uh, rooted in, in, in integrity and virtue. And and he said, but because it, you, you, again, is building a momentum and making it conscious in one's mind stream, in one's heart, that, say, whatever the, say, the memories and perceptions and, and, and identifications that we have had, we can be building new perspectives. And, and, and in this time, and then, uh, and that's actually, a, 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 I think it's a, it's a Sri Lankan custom. Uh, and that's oftentimes that's what is read at people's uh, deathbeds or if they're um, read to them so that they remember uh, the good that they have done. Um, so I think that uh, that uh, is just very consciously and very patiently building a momentum of, uh, 
of positive associations and for oneself of oneself uh, and and laying that foundation of you know very consciously in the heart it, it's not not uh, um, and sometimes I think for um, say in, in a uh, uh, from Judeo-Christian, in particular, Christian, um, not to think of oneself is somehow um, a virtue, or to think of oneself is a bad thing. But you know, to to very consciously pay attention to to that which is 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 actually good. Uh, it's really important. Question. Hello, Paul and Ajahn. So many thanks for organizing this retreat. My question is about how to have a difficult conversation with someone when your mind is coming from a bad place towards that person. My brother has just arrived for a short visit after living abroad many years, and uh, lifelong resentments arise unexpectedly towards him. I've tried metta and awareness of the sensation and think both will be useful in the long term, but by now the resentment is still there and I fear that having some legal conversations with need, which need to take place now can end up in disaster. Uh, any advice on how to deal with this skillfully would be highly appreciated. Um, you know, I think one of the things is to um, just to be very honest and put it out on the table. Uh, if because I assume that it's, yeah, you said it's, uh, it, it is a short visit. Um, and uh, to put it out on the table, this, these conversations have to, have to take place. Um, this is, I'm dealing with some sort of legalities, I'm not sure what, but that, uh, but I, I would, what I would do is just put it out on the table of, uh, this is how I'm feeling, and and I don't want this to get in the way, uh, and I don't want this to define everything. But you know, it's also like asking for help from uh, from say from your brother, and and uh, um, and being very honest about that because sometimes it's uh, you know we, we we go to the ideal of okay, uh, uh, I'll use meta and uh, aware and, and have. Awareness of the sensations that are arising and everything should work out well. Maybe not, and as those ideals tend to crumble pretty quickly uh, under the, say, the reality of of the mood and in the moment. So, to um, you know, I think, <laughs> especially if it's put out um, uh, in a in a sense of uh, you know, owning, owning your feeling and owning the uh, concern that, 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 you know, these necessary conversations are going to end up getting derailed and because of it. And, you know, I think it's, I mean, uh, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a hesitation we often have of this being vulnerable and, and uh, admitting our faults or our, our, our limitation and, and that, uh, well, that that gets in the way also. So, you know, I think, you know, one, obviously one does set the intention of metta. I mean, that's in, in any conversation, real conversation, you really do consciously try to, to, to establish a heart of loving kindness. Um, and feelings arise and pass away. It's this. It's, uh, uh, sometimes that 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 uh, yeah, that loving kindness, as as much as one would like to to be there, um, you know, gets gets overwhelmed. So I think just being collaborative in 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 the process is you know, might be helpful. Anyway, that's a, a thought that comes to my mind. Dear Ajans, in the supreme praise of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, when we chant by body, speech, and mind. For whatever action I've committed towards the Buddha, Dhamma Sangha, may my acknowledgement of all be accepted. 
What are concrete examples of, of faults that a lay person can commit towards what are done in the body of speech? You know, I think it's just, this is, this is not <coughs> all that specific. It's much more of a setting an intention to, um, you know, things that are, are, are uh, um, you know, not as beautiful as they could be, uh, not as dumbly centered as they as they could be, or things that we, you know, we do, we say, we, uh, we think, um, uh, and it's just recognizing uh, that's a reality. And but one is, it's through one's recognition that one has some flaws or some faults, <laughs> and one needs to improve. I mean, it's a, uh, it's just a. Uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, a helpful way of of uh, setting intentions, and setting intentions are 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 how we uh, move forward in any kind of practice and training for ourselves. We keep setting an intention to to, and it doesn't mean that we we uh, desperately cling to it and beat ourselves up because we didn't. I do it, but it's more like you're setting it, a, trying to set a skillful intention, trying to set a wholesome intention, trying to, trying to say, lift up our game a bit. Getting toward the end of the, the three more questions, and, and uh, uh, this is 7.15, we're I'm supposed to end, but I'll try to see what... Okay, well, as you're speaking, an image, a thought occurred to me, I felt all of my ancestors as far back as possible standing behind me and all of my future generations as far ahead of, as possible, including my own future lives. I saw a pathway filled with humans and other beings, thankful to your presence. My heart is filled with joy and gratitude. I bow to the full heart. And it's very beautiful. And it's a beautiful image um, because, uh, you know, what are the problems? One of the problems of our, um, say, growth in Dhamma is when uh, it's all about me. Uh, what about me? <laughs> That's, uh, oh, people are all about me. And, and, uh, and we, we forget that, that it's, it, you know, this, it's, this whole me uh, and the I, me, and mine program uh, is... Uh, uh, is fraught with the suffering, and just to recognize that we're we're, we're part of, of of something, and and we can be part of something really, really beautiful, and to to uh, and recognize that, that this this path is 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 uh, uh, allows us to to develop wisdom, compassion, purity, it's something to be extremely grateful for. Uh, next, I've been reading the biography Ajahn Man by Ajahn Mahabua. I'm struck by how hard Ajahn Man was on his disciples and also how hard his disciples were on themselves. I have a tendency towards self-criticism that I don't feel is particularly helpful, but it seems these forest monks were using self-criticism quite effectively. Can you comment? Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I think it's also helpful to know that that uh, once the the biography uh, of Ajahn Man that was done by Ajahn Mahabua came out, um, uh, there was a whole bunch of Ajahn Man disciples who sort of, huh, that wasn't how I experienced Ajahn Man, <laughs> and uh, and they asked another disciple to. Uh, do biography. So there's another biography. It's never been translated into into English, uh, but it was done that uh, showed Ajahn Man's uh, other qualities, other other side. And you know, yeah, I mean he was. I mean some of these the Ajahn Man was certainly ferocious, uh, or could be ferocious. Um, but uh, you know I think he also. You know, it's trying to 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 uh, encourage people to 
live up to their capability as opposed to settling for, say, for second best or third or fourth best is all you know. <laughs> Sometimes if we could get up to second best, we were doing pretty good. But, it's, you know, just to, to uh, uh, but, 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 yeah, definitely this, 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 I think within uh, certain culture, there is a, a uh, uh, self-abnegation, self-criticism, um, a, a rampant, it's not very helpful at all. Um, and, uh, um, I think sometimes for, for many of the disciples of Ajahn Man who grew up in a, uh, an environment, a, a culture that was steeped in, in Buddhist practices, uh, self-perception was extremely concrete in terms of, of uh, faith uh, in, the, uh, in Buddha Dhamma and Sangha, gratitude towards uh, teachers and and uh, uh, so there's a lot of positive undertones uh, that are the ground that say some say some self criticism or or, or criticism could could be uh, uh, that it, it is countered with. Um, but anyway, those are some quick reflections on that. Last question is, uh, dear Uncle Paul, I'm happy to see you are well. Thank you for joining us. My question is about the amount or type of suffering left when one reaches stream entry. In the last many years of my affiliation with the Baigiri and Ajahn Cha, the mental amount of suffering has been resolved and fell away. I've noticed at times uh, that I feel sad, stuck, agitated, or any other Mind is when I'm ill, my body is sick, it makes me feel low in my mood. I feel I need some other partner who I practice with, special to, then I think I will lose him or him or I, or who knows what other obligatory suffering that comes with it. It's not permanent, I let it go. When I'm feeling fine physically, not much bothers me, and if it does, it lasts a few moments as I catch the self in motion. Anyway, conceptually, what kinds of suffering will remain when one reaches stream entry? Is it different for different people? Or are there specific characteristics or defilements that need burning, dissolving? By the way, I forgot to add all of the people who practiced with me, uh, uh, their ancestors or future generations that joined the line to show the gratitude. Um, the, I mean, there's, there's a very beautiful image that the Buddha gives uh, where he is in Raj, Raj, near Rajgir and it's, it's surrounded by seven mountains. I mean, not Himalaya type mountains, but big, uh, very big hills. And, and the Buddha is sitting with the monks and one day he, he takes his finger and, he, and, and his fingernail scoops up a little at the end of his finger fingernail, a little bit of earth, and he asks, what is more, the earth on the end of my fingertip here, or the earth, Mount Waipula, this, this big mountain in, uh, in near, near Rajgir, and uh, the monk said, whoa, you know, uh, the, the amount of earth on the end of your fingertip is, is in a school compared to the uh, the amount and the, of that the, the large mountain Waipula. and the Buddha says similarly monks the amount of suffering <clears throat> left for one who has entered the stream uh, is comparable to the amount of suffering left uh, that amount of suffering on the end of my fingertip as compared to the mount it's not, it, one has dropped a huge amount of suffering. Uh, and, and there's still some suffering left uh, for a stream enter. Uh, what one does relinquish with, <clears throat> with 
with, uh, with, with stream entry is the relinquishing of, of self-identity, identification, um, these five khandas that's seen through, it's understood. Uh, one drops the suffering that, that, uh, of that identification, drops the suffering of, of uh, assuming or of like the social conventions, con religious conventions are somehow going to purify me and make me a, 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 a good person, a happy person. So sort of seeing through that convention, right, and ritual, ceremony, precept, practice, um, it's not that one doesn't engage in those things, but one doesn't expect that that is the sole means of purification. And, and one is free from doubt, uncertainty, wavering. Uh, I want seen enough truth uh, to understand where it comes from. Um, there's still uh, you know, a certain amount of greed, hatred, delusion, but it has boundaries. Uh, and you know, if there's greed, hatred, delusion, there will be some suffering. Uh, there will be some sorrow of separation. And there's many aspects of, of, to a certain degree, are, uh, are ordinary, but it is <clears throat> really attenuated. Anyway, I, uh, uh, it's 7.25, I've gone over my time, and uh, I'll leave it there for now.